to Griffin Update Sports, a student-produced show all about Missouri Western Athletics. We've got it all every week. Highlights, games, players, fans, and every sport all year long. Welcome back to this semester's first Griffin Update Sports. I'm your host, Bailey Ketchum, and joining us this semester is my new co-host, Jake Michael. On today's show, we're going to take a look at the men's and women's track team and women's basketball. We'll also find out more about the Chiefs returning to St. Joe this summer and introduce our new sports trivia segment. And of course, we'll have our roundtable discussion about a hot sports topic. This week, we're discussing the Super Bowl. Ugh, I've been waiting for this all year. First up, let's hear from our athletic director about the new Chiefs summer camp contract. Reporter Morgan Doyle has more on the story. While Missouri Western may be home of the Griffins, it will also once again be home to the Kansas City Chiefs in the summer of 2018. Missouri Western recently announced that they'd come to an agreement with the Chiefs to keep the defending AFC West Division champs in St. Joseph for another year of training camp. Athletic Director Josh Looney explained how the extension deal came about. The Chiefs camp extension for 18 with a mutual option for 2019 is a testament to the last eight years of this campus and the support uh, and positive relationship that the Chiefs and the community and the city and this institution have had. Um, our negotiations were positive throughout the fall and uh, the Chiefs were clear that they wanted to continue that partnership and we were clear that we wanted to continue having them so it was just working out the details that were able to make that happen and um, help our, our financial situation here at campus and, uh, and also uh, make sure we're, we're delivering the product that, that the Chiefs are appreciate as well. The Chiefs first called St. Joe their home away from home back in 2010, making this their ninth year and third longest consecutive location in franchise history. Over the years, Mo West has benefited in many ways from hosting the Chiefs, including the creation of the Griffin Indoor Sports Complex. Each and every year you have 30 to 50,000 people attending Chiefs camp and a lot of those people may never come to St. Joseph otherwise or may not step on foot on this campus or know about Missouri Western if uh, it wasn't for Chiefs camp. So the visibility and the brand reach uh, is really something you can't measure. Missouri Western student Jackson Rush is a St. Joe native and has been coming to the training camp for years. He is excited to have the chance to come out and watch his Chiefs play again this summer. You have to take pride in that. In that. I mean, when, when you see someone that you've seen in your hometown play on TV in the professional sports, it's just it's a really cool moment. You have to take pride in it. Some changes were made to the new extension dealing with equipment, labor, and housing, but nothing noticeably different to an outsider. Yeah, the major changes are all going to be things that happen behind the scenes, just how we operate efficiently. We really took a, a look at, at our staffing and our behind the scenes structure over the last two contracts and uh, training camps changed from both sides during that time. So it was really more negotiations on, on some of those back end things. So I think from an outside perspective, it's going to be the training camp that people have come to enjoy and love. Training camp will be held towards the end of July, when Missouri Western's campus will quickly fade from bleeding black and gold to Kansas City red and gold. Morgan Doyle, Griffin Update Sports. I can't wait to have the Chiefs back here this summer. Next up is the Player of the Week. This week, it's women's basketball player Malia Richardson. Women's basketball has had some tough times this season. Dawson Whitman has more on Richardson. Missouri Western's women's basketball team has had a rough year this year due to lots of injuries. However, one thing has stayed consistent, and that is the play of junior guard Malia Richardson. Richardson is averaging double digits in scoring with 10.9 points per game and has earned this week's Player of the Week. Uh, yeah, with everyone who's being hurt, like we've all had to step it up, and so I don't know, I give it the credit to my teammates. They're helping me out. I think I'm trying to step up, take more shots, and you know, they're helping me get the ball, but they're all stepping up too, so credit goes to my teammates and my coaches because they're pushing me. One of the coaches pushing Malia Richardson is Coach Edmison, and he says he couldn't be more proud of Malia during this hard injury-plagued year. Well, I mean, everything starts with point guards in basketball and your leadership, your toughness, your uh, intensity, uh, and she has all those intangibles. I mean, she's doing everything. Uh, that we hoped she'd do when we recruited her here uh, three years ago. She's in her junior season. Uh, she has improved every year. Uh, she's doing an unbelievable job. This year, 
uh, during an unbelievably hard time for our program and our team with all the injuries we've had. So uh, as, as we've had more injuries, she's elevated her game. So I can't be more proud of what she's done for our team, and she's the face of our team. Richardson says her role as far as running the offense is more now than it ever has been. Um, that's been kind of a role for me all year. I mean, it's gotten even more now, but I just try to talk, be a leader, try to help everyone out because when you have a voice on the court, it helps the whole team. So. Malia Richardson's teammate Brittany Atkins believes that Malia is a huge, intricate part of their team. Um, Malia means everything. Like, she really runs the team well. She talks to us like... I remember the first couple of practices, I didn't know really what I was doing. I was like, man, what's going on? And then I just talked to her, I was like, can you like talk, call out the plays? And just her voice, and she pushes us so much. She motivates us. She brings so much energy to the team. Like, without her, we probably go down here. So. Although Malia Richardson is a top performer, she still gets overlooked, according to Coach Edmondson. And, and, you know, the thing that gets overlooked is she leads the conference in assist turnover ratio. I mean, she's turning it over fewer times than any point guard in our league, which is the best league in women's basketball for Division II. Uh, she doesn't turn the ball over, which is what you want out of your point guard. So, plus she also gets the assignment of guarding the other team's best player. So, she's having to do double duty. It's like a football player playing both ways. Uh, she's having to be our best defender and our best offensive player right now. With Malia being a junior, she believes that her experience within the program has helped her become a leader on the team. Yeah, uh, I've had some really good experience, especially with being under point guards. Like, Chelsea Dewey was here my first two years, and I got to learn from her a lot. And so, now that's my turn to lead, I mean, I think it's helped a lot. Reporting for Griffin Update Sports, I'm Dawson Whitman. Thanks, Dawson. The women played Northwest last Saturday in an upsetting three-point loss, but will return home this weekend. I wonder how track is doing so far this season. Well, it just so happens that I was able to talk to them about it. Check out what they had to say. This being the first ever track and field season in Missouri Western's long athletics history, the team already has made a splash at each of the four events they have competed in. Several top ten finishes among men and women, and also the women taking a couple crowns at the South Dakota State Division II Invitational. I feel like the main thing that people should be excited for this year is like just breaking the records at the school first. Because that's what got me excited, just like putting your name on the record list just for future references and just competing. Competing is fun. The practices are intense and competitive to only make each other better. Every day is an opportunity to improve. But in case some did not know, this collection of dynamic athletes feel they have no one else to prove to but themselves. You know, we're just trying to work hard, just show great effort, hold your teammates accountable. We just want to really see the results. We're just ready to compete and we want everyone to be excited about uh, our new PRs, our, our records we're trying to break and just bringing track and field to the school, representing Griffs. 58 freshmen out of 72 total athletes really means starting from the ground up, but you have to start somewhere. Laying the foundation for future Griffin track athletes means they know they're a part of something special. First year coach Mark Beerbaum has been thoroughly impressed with what he's seen out of his group in the first two months of the season. Well, the women uh, were versatile. Uh, we've, we've got a little bit of everything on the women's side, uh, um, which makes us pretty versatile. Uh, we're young on both sides, men and women were young, but uh, you know, on the guy side, we feature you know a lot of local athletes. All the all the little things from you know the the hurdle technique to the throw technique, gain strength, just continue to sharpen up for the conference meet and every day gear towards that conference national meet, uh, making sure we're ready for those for those competitions. Up next for the men and women is the Fred Beal Invitational in Crete, Nebraska, Saturday, February 3rd. Reporting for Griffin Update Sports, I'm Jake Michael. I'm happy to hear that their season is off to a great start. One of the things we do here at Griffin Update Sports is to make sure we give students on campus a voice. Sometimes we get amusing results. Check out our new sports trivia segment, Do You Know Your Sports with Bailey Ketchum. Welcome to our new segment, Do You Know Your Sports with Bailey Ketchum. I will be walking around Missouri Western's campus asking students random sports trivia questions. Okay, I'm here with Michaela. Michaela, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl this year? 
Unfortunately, I think the Patriots are going to win. Um, definitely on that bandwagon where it's everybody versus the Patriots. So um, I hope the, the Eagles will pull through, though. Who is Missouri Western's rival? Uh, the Northwest Bearcats. Mm, Bearcats. Who are the quarterbacks for the Patriots and the Eagles? Uh, it's Tom Brady and Nick Foles right now. Who do you think is the best team in the NBA? The Warriors. Why? Because Steph Curry is cute. <laughs> what is your favorite sports moment from 2017? Honestly, I feel like my, my favorite sports moment from 2017 is when the, uh, the, the soccer ladies, you know, scored their last goal they needed to score to win that game. <laughs> Who is going to win the Super Bowl this year? Uh, I'm going to go with the Patriots. Pats. He's a bandwagon, I bet. If you could play for any NFL team, what team would it be and why? Chiefs. Why? Because unlike the Rams, they stay true to Missouri. Okay, I like that. What is our head football coach's name? Coach Willie. <laughs> Who won the Super Bowl last year? Uh, it was Denver, I think. Wrong. <laughs> it was the Patriots. <laughs> Who are the quarterbacks for the Patriots and Eagles? Patriots, it's Tom Brady. Eagles, it's Nick Foles. What is your favorite sports moment from 2017? Probably when Messi scored his 500th goal. Who won the Heisman this year? Who won the Heisman was, uh, ooh, I know this. I, uh, he's from Oklahoma. What is his name? Yes. Uh, Rhymes with Maker. Uh, <laughs> Baker. <laughs> yes. Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl this year? The Patriots or the Eagles? The Patriots. Because? Twitter told me to like them. All right. All right. <laughs> Who is the best Missouri Western sports team on campus this year? The, the, the best Missouri Western school team. This year? It has to be the girls basketball. Why? I believe they got a complete, like, you know, all-around team, you know. Got a little bit of this, got a little bit of that, and not too much. All right. And, and, and we know, you know, fundamentals. <laughs> what else? I don't know. It is good. That's all. We're the best. All right. There you have it. I don't even think I knew the answers to all those questions. You'll learn. After this break, we will have more sports trivia with two special guests. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to our new sports trivia segment. Today, Dawson Whitman and Gannon Cornley will be competing against each other in Missouri Western sports trivia. The winner will be on the show next week. Let's begin. I will ask you guys 13 questions. When you have the right answer, hit your button. Ready? Mm -hmm. Which Missouri Western fall sports team won the MIAA last fall? Dawson. Volleyball. Correct. Who is the men and women's golf coach? Dan. Coach Dillon. Correct. Who is the football and soccer stadium named after? Elliot Spratt is the stadium. Who is it named after? Uh, Steve Craig. Correct. Ooh, cool. Who was our old athletic director? Kurt awesome. McCutcheon. McGuffin. McGuffin. Correct. What year was the last time women's basketball won the MIAA? 2016. Correct. What round of the national tournament did women's soccer make it to this last season? First. First round, what was the name of it? Uh, the Central Regional. Correct. When did the football and soccer stadium start renovation? I believe it was October. What year? 2016. Wrong. 2015. Correct. Mm. Who is the face behind Missouri Western athletic videos? Ryan Minley. Correct. What is the tradition that started this year after a Missouri Western team wins a game? Ringing the bell. Correct. 
What are all the sports at Missouri Western? Um, <laughs> let's do football, baseball, girls and boys basketball, tennis, uh, golf, track, cross country, and volleyball, and softball. And there's one more. I don't remember. I was just messing with you. That was all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who is our new athletic trainer? Ooh. Athletic director. Okay. Oh, director? In that case, Jacob Looney. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Looney's last name. What's the first name? Let's see. John? Josh. 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 Josh Looney. How many years have the Chiefs been training at Missouri Western in the summer? Since 2010. Correct. What does the JISC stand for? Griffin Indoor Sports Complex. Correct. Well, I think we have a winner. Dawson. Hey. <laughs> we'll see you on next week's show. Sweet. Be right back with the sports roundtable after this. At Missouri Western, it's on us. It's on us, all of us, to take responsibility and stop sexual assault. To create a campus environment where everyone is safe and feels safe. To realize that ending sexual assault is not an individual endeavor. But a collective effort. To understand that it affects not only students, but faculty and staff members alike. At Missouri Western, we take action. It's on us to look out for each other and not look the other way. We step up and say something. We support survivors. We are going to be a part of the solution and not the problem. It's on us to intervene and take responsibility. So take action because we can and will make a difference. At Missouri Western, it's on us to, to put, put an, an end, end to sexual, sexual assault. assault. Begin by taking the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back. Jake and I are here along with Griffin News Sports Editor Derek Zimmerman Geyer to talk about a hot sports topic. This week, we're discussing the upcoming Super Bowl. Jake, what are your thoughts on the teams? Well, it seems like another Rocky movie. It's just the Patriots are, are Rocky, and it's whoever wants to just step into the ring. doesn't matter who it is. They take every team seriously. I'm actually surprised that New England is a four-point favorite, according to Westgate, considering the fact that the Eagles are a top-five scoring defense and offense, and the fact that the Eagles have six Pro Bowlers to the Patriots' four. But when you look at the difference in the quarterback play, you see how much of a difference that makes. So it'll be an interesting matchup. The fact that Rob Gronkowski is good to go, that's going to be huge because he poses a lot of matchup problems for that defense. But the personnel for the Eagles on defense, it's pretty solid. And I think they're actually quietly underrated. So I don't think people take them as seriously as they should. The Eagles had the most momentum going into the game because of the beatdown they put on the Vikings, who I actually thought – would have been a better matchup for the Patriots yeah. because of their personnel on defense. The key to the game is going to be getting after Brady. That's what the Falcons were able to do in the first three quarters of the Super Bowl last year, you know, with Grady Jarrett, Deion Jones, guys like that. Brady had a pick six in the second quarter, I think. That's right. That was absolutely huge. And then they got tired, and that's what made the difference. But the Patriots are given two weeks to prepare, and they're one of the best teams at preparing. Bill Belichick is going to have a great game plan. Brady is going to have a great game, as always, as we all know. The Patriots, well, actually, both teams have really gone through hardship. The Patriots lost Julian Edelman. They lost Dante Hightower. They had some power struggle in the front office between Kraft and Belichick and Brady. That was just a big debacle. And then the Eagles lost Carson Wentz, which is a huge loss, Jason Peters. So both teams have a lot to complain about, but they're not going to complain about it. I'm going to rewind it back, and the fact that you called the Patriots Rocky is an atrocity. <laughs> Philadelphia is where Rocky lived. The Eagles are Rocky. Come on now. Not in this instance. The, the Rocky. So, um, in all honesty, it's the Patriots in their Super Bowl. They always look better on paper against any team they play. They always look better. Uh, both teams going in are number one seeds in each uh, the respective conferences. Uh, but going into the playoffs, the Eagles didn't really feel like number one seed uh, due to the fact they lost Wentz, who was going to be their MVP, the MVP of the season. Oh, yeah. 
No doubt. So I think Doug Peterson deserves a lot of credit for what he's done with that team. The fact, you know, he had Wentz who, uh, in the second year, again, MVP, but he had to resort to Nick Foles, who's a, a subpar quarterback at best. He's all right. But I think with – they had – not too many people touched on the fact that a year ago, Doug Peterson and Nick Foles were able to team up all year in Kansas City. And, you know, uh, in the Indianapolis game, Alex Smith goes out for concussion. Nick Foles comes in in the second half, has a great game. Next week, Alex Smith's still out. Foles comes in against the Jaguars. That's a really iffy game. He gets the win. And, you know, even I kind of discounted uh, Nick Foles after that game. I was like, oh, he's nothing that good. But now you kind of look at it, the Jaguars' defense turned out to be pretty good. So it's kind of, it kind of, it's kind of respectable on their part. And so I think the keys for the Eagles is to maintain a lead and put the lead on. Put, put the foot on the throat. Keep the pedal to the metal, because if you look back at the last uh, every pretty much every Patriots game in the playoffs, their their opponents don't run out of gas, like you said. The uh, Jaguars had a ten point lead and they started to cruise. Eight minutes left, ten point lead. That's nothing for Brady. The Falcons up are twenty eight to three in the Super Bowl and they cruise. They stall. And uh, with the Eagles, they, they it doesn't look like they're stalling. They're up twenty four to seven on the Vikings in the conference championship. Twenty four to seven. Fully flicker. Touchdown. Keep the keep the pace up. Yeah, Brady's always good at coming back on when he's down. But I just want to start with I'm a little upset that the Eagles beat the Vikings and the Vikings did not make it in. So I'm going to go with the underdogs. I want the Eagles to win because the Pats have had their chances. They've been up there. I think it's an I think it's time for a new team to get up there. But I'm really excited to see how Brady will do just because he is he does have that injury on his hand, but he did do good last game, but, I mean, I think we can all agree that he could have done better. He made it a little a little scary, a little a little scary <laughs> at times. But when you look at the stats of these two teams, they're pretty close. The points scored and the points allowed are almost identical. So I think it'll be really interesting. And for Bilicek, he hasn't faced a top-five scoring offense and defense in eight of the Super Bowls that he's been in. So I think he's really going to have to keep his offense on point and – I don't know about Grunk yet. I hope he's playing. He's coming back from that concussion. So I hope that he's playing and he helps out Brady. But Nick Foles, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what he's going to do. I wish, that obviously, that Carson Wentz was still back in here. I think that the team has set him up really well to do the easy, e easy plays, and his defense has really helped him a lot. But I don't know, I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, and really what a difference a year makes. You know, the Eagles last year were 7-9. and nine. Not a bad season. Um, but then, you know, you, you turn right around, get six wins, go 13-3. and three. That's huge. They made a lot of good acquisitions in the offseason. And I thought the trade for Jay Ajayi was huge. Really opens things up. Takes a lot of the pressure off the quarterback. That's huge. Um, but really, I mean, it, on paper you look at it and you think, well, the Eagles have the better roster, but I think the Patriots, just with all the experience and with this much time to prepare, is going to really make this a really good game. I don't think it's going to be a 28-3 to lead that gets turned right around to the Patriots, but, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, just be on the lookout for trick plays because, you know, the Patriots always have them up their sleeves. Things are going to happen. They're going to pull out all their best stuff for the Super Bowl. You said uh, Jay Ajayi uh, was a good pickup for the Eagles, and I agree. Uh, him and LeGarrette Blount have been great uh, for the running game, for full as it takes a load off him. But when you look at uh, teams uh, overall-wise, in the playoffs, I thought, in my opinion, the best team on paper, the best team all around was the Saints. They had a great defense, great quarterback, great running game. They had great everything. And they ended up getting beat. They ended up getting by the Vikings, and that made the Vikings look good. And then Case Keenum looked good, and no one thought Case Keenum looked good. That was a miracle. That was a, a Minneapolis miracle. A Minneapolis miracle. But um, the fact, you know, the Saints were beaten by the Vikings, and it makes the Vikings look good, it trans over, uh, transitions over to the Eagles, and that just speaks wonders about the depth of their team. Okay, so it's Brady and Bilicek's eighth Super Bowl together. Let's just talk. He's 40 now. If he wins the Super Bowl, which – I'm rooting against him, unfortunately. But if he wins the Super Bowl, he's the oldest quarterback to win the Super Bowl. You guys think he's going to slow down at all after this, or you think he's just going to keep going? No, I, I think the way he takes care of his body is unlike anything we've ever seen. You know, we talk about the greatness of, like, a Michael Jordan. He didn't always take great care of his body. Of course, he took a lot of lay – you know, he laid off a little bit, took some time off from basketball in between. 
but that's really what separates Tom Brady from being from everybody else that's ever played. And also being taken with 199th pick back in, I think it was in 2000. And then to go on to have the career that he's had is just, it's just phenomenal. And I think he really plays with the chip on his shoulder all the time. Um, I don't see him slowing down anytime soon, but you never know. You, you never know what the wife's saying at home. She may be <laughs> like, you know what, just, just stay home. You know? Tom Brady is, an, is the angel's wonder. I, he says he plans on playing until 45, and I believe it, honestly. That man does not look like he's aged a day for a long time now. And, you know, uh, I was watching the Super Bowl media show last night, and he's talking about uh, how he, t- you know, he just, they ask him all these questions, how he takes it of himself, and the dude is thorough in working. It, like, it's unbelievable. I think he works out harder than some of the rookies in the league. Oh, yeah, for sure. I agree with you guys. It's just... No one's stopped him yet. I don't think anyone will be able to stop him. I'm hoping the Eagles' defense will stop him. But, all right, let's talk about what are your guys' expected scores for the games? Well, everybody's cheering for the underdog, and that's that's cute. That's adorable. <laughs> but I, I just – New England's one of the great organizations in all of sports. You know, just the, the dominance over the last, you know, 15 years is just unbelievable. Some people don't like their dominance, but in my opinion, I like watching great teams be great. So because of that, because of you got the great coach, the great quarterback, and everything else, everything else will just fall into place. I'm going to take the Pats 19-14. Well, the Patriots are two crazy catches away from having seven Super Bowl wins, and I think a third catch will happen from Nelson Aguilar, and it'll pull off a miracle catch, and the Eagles win 38-24. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say that the Eagles are going to get their first Super Bowl win. I think the final score will be 24-20. I hope the commercials are good. <laughs> oh. I hope, uh, Justin, <laughs> Justin Timberlake's going to be awesome, I, I think, anyway. I I'm hope so, too. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. <laughs> After this break, we'll take a look at more results from sports and this week's upcoming sporting events. <laughs> back. Before we end the show, we want to give you more updates about what's going on with all Missouri Western sports. Men's basketball traveled to Northwest Missouri State last weekend, but were disappointed with a loss to the Bearcats. Men's and women's track and field traveled to Pittsburgh State and had many top 10 finishings, including Hannah Williams finishing fourth in the 400 and Megan Gillen finished sixth in the one mile. For the upcoming schedule, men's basketball returns home to face Lindenwood on Thursday at 730 and Lincoln on Saturday at 4. Women's basketball is also home against Lindenwood on Thursday at 5.30 and Lincoln on Saturday at 2. Men's and women's track and field travels to Crete, Nebraska on Saturday to compete in the Fred Beal Invitational. That's all we have for you today. For more information on Griffin Athletics, check out gogriffins.com. Also check out Bailey's Sports Report on Griffin Update next week. We've got you covered every week. From all of us here at Griffin Update Sports, thank you for watching.